On to the second part of my dash through Western painting. I've already reviewed this work. Let me just note that we see the strong evidence of Spanish Baroque, especially in the religious theme and use of symbols. But we also see a new emphasis on reason and learning, a reflection of the dawning enlightenment. This botanist's daughter exploited the full power of oil paint, that's continuity, but she also introduces a theme of scientifically oriented naturalism, powered in part by the new microscope. Sometimes this allegedly scientific focus seems a little creepy, but here we see the fruits of the scientific revolution married to Baroque painting techniques, continuity, uh, such as tenebrism, open composition, and the strong use of diagonals. In some ways, the orrery is treated as a kind of religious symbol, or at least as a substitute for one, but we do see the new influence of the scientific revolution. This Enlightenment work also has elements that we saw in Renaissance paintings, and we'll see again in neoclassical works especially the use of architectural elements to frame the painting and create depth. The social satire, however, is a new element, again reflecting Enlightenment thought. Rococo paintings actually reflect one element of the Enlightenment as well, the naturalism espoused by Rousseau. Note that the painting retains some Baroque features as well, spotlighting, diagonals, a sense of movement, open composition, but the colors are lighter and the whole mood is frothier. While there is an element of satire here, the painting is all about illicit love. It is not intended to make the aristocratic patrons who purchase these works uncomfortable. Again, we see frothy textures that echo Rococo. The highly natural pose also echoes Rousseau, but the clear rational gaze and female self-assertion suggest more of an enlightenment outlook. This quintessential neoclassical painting actually has Renaissance elements. Note the careful perspective and the tiles and the use of architecture to define space. We also see some Baroque lighting, diagonals, and high drama. But the subject matter, the glorification of the state over personal interests, ties this work to the Enlightenment and its heir, the French Revolution. Note that David also returns to tight brush strokes and the somewhat stiff formal posture. Again, that was actually reflecting Roman statuary. Emotion returns with Romanticism, but while this etching expresses revulsion at revolution's excesses, it still carries a strong social message, which again creates continuity with neoclassicism. This painting likewise continues to praise revolution, but in a far more dynamic and emotional style than David's cool ne neoclassicism. We see a resurgence of Baroque elements, including spotlighting, loose brushstrokes, diagonals, and open composition. Even the inclusion of common people echoes Caravaggio's tavern inhabitants. So I've already talked about how this painting marries mannerist style to a romantic fascination with the exotic East or Orientalism. And of course, there's a long tradition of reclining nudes. We saw naturalism in Renaissance and Enlightenment landscapes, but now we add the romantic element of the sublime. The horrible, the frightening, the overwhelming, something that raises a high emotional feeling. This painting also captures the romantic's ambivalence about progress. It's exciting and dynamic, but it's destructive at the same time. And here we have so many romantic elements, a social message, dramatic use of color and lighting, sublime and terrifying nature, and terrifying human nature. But Turner is going a further step and really foreshadowing developments we will see with Impressionism in his use of light and scattered blobs of color. And with this painting, we begin to usher in modernism. The shout outs to earlier Renaissance nudes is clear, but so is the challenge to the male gaze and the objectification of women. The flat picture plane and loose brush strokes also signal a move toward more painterly works that do not attempt to compete with photography for complete realism, but instead make the act of painting itself more obvious and apparent. And I'm going to quit here. The remaining paintings come from our Unit 12, which was the last one we finished before beginning to review. However, I've put up an optional review quiz for Unit 12 works, and I would encourage you to go through it just to finish going through almost all of our works in review. But otherwise, when it comes to lectures, you're done.